What's up guys, this is your boy Jason right here and um, yeah, I'm actually back into doing tutorials. I fixed my mic, I used to have that ugly ass background noise all the time. I don't know what it was, but it's it has just gone. So uh, yeah, I really feel like doing tutorials. Therefore, I thought that we might go over uh, camera movement, um, keyframing, all of that inside of After Effects and that's what we're gonna do today. So I prepared a little scene, I just set up um, uh, element 3d uh, layer with the three models um, uh, yeah they actually separated in z dimension so um, yeah they go more in depth they're not smaller they're just uh, more back in space so uh, yeah first of all what we want to do uh, when creating a camera now some of y'all might have um, experience with photography and all that. So for you, those of you who don't and who basically don't understand nothing of all this, um, first of all, set the units to pixels and this might help you out. Therefore, uh, you see what, what um, basically the zoom uh, is about. This is basically the distance between your lens and the, the uh, focus distance I think or to the object or something like that then we got the angle of view which is more or less like the above the field of view in common COD games and further other games and we got the depth of field which some of y'all might have heard of uh, with the aperture the f-stop if you know about this tweak this if you don't just leave it like that I won't enable the depth of field right away I'm just gonna create a camera two node camera make sure this is turned on otherwise you won't be able to have an anchor point that you can spin around off uh, and go with the 50 millimeter preset camera just like that I'm gonna leave it like that create the camera and um, to actually orbit and then navigate around within your camera make sure you got this on active camera set uh, you might even want to go two views which means that you have your active camera and one which is always uh, from top I'm just gonna leave it like this uh, for now and with that uh, done be sure to uh, get the unified camera tool, which you can rather click by just, uh, which you could actually re rather get by just clicking C on your keyboard. And um, why you would want to take the unified one, you can take the orbit, the track X, Y, or the Z camera tool, but the unified one just is more easier because with the right mouse click, you can zoom in and out, which basically uh, lets you um, yeah, navigate the Z axis. With the left mouse click, you can orbit around your anchor point, uh, and there you see actually how your camera is moving. And with the middle mouse clicked, you can sort of like uh, move, but um, this time you're actually also moving your anchor point, so that you're uh, right in this example, for example, you wouldn't um, you wouldn't uh, orbit around the statue no more because you got your anchor point offset. Uh, let me just uh, you you to get all my tweaked um, values right here and reset them. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, just like that. So you can do this, um, basically, if you got a scene like that. Or what you can do, instead of, um, instead of just going in, uh, with the camera highlighted, click AA on your keyboard. You can uh, set your zoom which is basically the the field of view um, higher or lower so uh, you see that uh, we got a degree number right here which is rather getting smaller which means that we are more zoomed in it's uh, yeah it's more or less like a smaller fav in COD um, if I now orbit around you see that we have the other two also in the frame and it's much much yeah it's just more zoomed in and if we uh, go actually lower on the zoom which means that we increase the uh, horizontal angle uh, that's what the, this number right here stands for then we get a super wide angle um, this and that so I'm just gonna keep with with 177,8 just like that I'm gonna press UU again to reset all my position values and I'm just gonna zoom in for now just like that now let me actually turn this back on one view um, what you would do actually right now, I guess, would be uh, going on your position, um, keyframing that from here to maybe uh, here. Let's just, or let's actually get a little bit more of a face, not them titties. Um, just like that, I guess. So you would um, 
yeah, you would actually have a smooth, more or less smooth um, camera navigation just like that. But if you actually want to um, to get a, a, a straight way clean rotation around this object, uh, this can get a little bit cheeky because um, let's just say that I'm going to go for the same X and Y, actually no, I'm going to go for the same Z distance, let me just copy this keyframe once more, just like that, yeah I'm going to go on the X, more or less, let's just say 1280 and I'm going to go 0 for the Z axis, and this would give us something like that, so we got um, our camera path right here, and uh, yeah you could of course try to um, I don't know to make them smooth like this uh, with your selection tool um but there's a much more easier way on doing that uh nonetheless if you are working with cameras you should always consider combining or parenting your camera to a dolly and this is what we're going to do now so let me just uh, get rid of this keyframe let me put it back to one view and let's create a null object. Be sure that the null object is basically a 3D layer. Uh, so you just click on this little cube right there. And I'm just going to call it, um, click and enter, uh, call it Dolly for now. And then what I'm going to do is go on the camera, take this little pick whip and parent it to my Dolly. And um, now what this gives us is basically if I go on the dolly and uh, for example take out the R, um, X, the rotation values on uh, X, Y and Z, if I play with one of these you see that I get a perfect um, rotation uh, on the X axis more, more or less. Uh, so that from here on I could just easily keyframe this at about, uh, let's actually go about here. I could go to about two seconds, I think that's fair enough. Uh, put it back to zero uh, and it will give me this. Now let's not worry about the uh, keyframe interpolation or the speed of the keyframe for now. Uh, let's do something more on the um, camera now, which you can see that you don't have um, your X and Y on 640 and 360 as we used to, as it is uh, parented to the null, which means that we can sort of offset it from the null. Um, but I wouldn't, I mean, it's, it's all up to you. It's all about how you want to express your creativity with your camera angles and paths and all that. I'm just going to leave that for now and I'm just going to take the Z axis and keyframe that. And I'll go for that um, here. I think that's, that's acceptable. And on the first keyframe, I'm just going to zoom it in. So uh, let's go back to our two view. What that will give us is more or less like a gradually out zoom in but at the same time nicely rotating camera angle um that we have right here um sort of for all the m's i'm uh kind of stressed i don't want to get this too long i sometimes get to um make tutorials way the longer than i actually plan them to do so uh yeah with that done uh you, you can do even more go on the camera uh rotation and maybe tweak the Z rotation which I think looks fantastic if you know how to how to do it and how to combine it um, that can look pretty cool if you really get the hang out of, out of that one more thing that you always want to do with keyframes is actually interpolate them the one the way you want them to be interpolated now to some of y'all this might uh, sounds a bit confusing but uh, I'm just gonna explain this pretty quick so as we see right here in the graph editor, which you could easily access by uh, holding down Shift and F3 on your keyboard, we got um, this as a straight line. So more or less in math, this would be a, a linear function, I guess. Um, but sometimes you do want to get a little bit more dramatic uh, or just a little bit more drama into here. And um, want to have it being very slow animated at the beginning and then go out very fast. So what you would do is basically easy ease, just like you do with other keyframes as well. When you think, sync, uh, sorry for that, or when you uh, do sort of other effects. So that you would have it uh, being rather slow animated at the beginning. Um... Uh, now I'm only ta uh, yeah I'm only playing with the rotation right now, so let me also do that for the position. Let me actually separate dimensions. Uh, this is a little short little, little handy tip. Uh, sometimes position position is actually always linked. Uh, this is always unified. So uh, when you only p uh, like just like in my example, when you only um, 
yeah, playing around with one dimension or with one axis, you might want to consider separating dimensions. Right click, separate dimension on the position, and now this is this is automatically going to easy ease my Z position. I'm just going to take off the X and Y keyframe for that. Um, go on the camera, press U to only get the uh, the values that I've time that I've keyframed. And um, let's basically more or less do the same that we got with this curve, uh, which means that I would go here and I would go do it like that. And that means that's basically that we got it slowly um, going around, but it's still not zooming out. And then for the end, it's zooming out just like that. And if you even want to uh, go on the uh, Y rotation that our dolly is actually controlling, you would uh, you could do the same thing with that. Just go right here, go right there, and do the same. And we would have it really, really slow at the beginning, and then really fast going out. So this is all up to you. This is how you want to, uh, to end in your final product. Two more things. Uh, when playing with cameras within uh, After Effects, sometimes you do want to get another angle. Um, and I would not recommend using the same camera. So what you might want to do is be sure that you get the same um, the same field of view more or less and the same settings for your camera and then just set up another one so i'm just going to trim it like there um sorry for that i'm going to trim it with alt and and bracket uh for any germans it should be alt and a eh. um and then i'm going to just easily create a new camera just like that gonna be sure that i got the same dimensions more or less right here uh, all the same settings and then I'm gonna trim it again from here I'm gonna go to about four seconds just to get another angle easy as that and um, yeah let's just uh, pretty fast do some some sneaky movement right here uh, also parent this one to the dolly uh, now if you have a dolly null object uh, that's how I like to call it uh, it's it's whatever um, you can actually take multiple cameras and link them to one dolly. You can also go for different dollies if you do want to, I don't know, play with the uh, position of the dolly to get uh, your anchor point of the camera moved. Uh, but that's uh, that's all completely up to you. I'm just going to uh, keyframe the position one more time right here. Let me actually get the camera tool. Uh, let me do something like th that. And then let's go out and do something like that I guess let's just let's just gonna do it like that there we go we got a nice angle going down here uh, focusing on what's really important in life and um, there we go we got uh, another nice angle right there um, really ha pretty handy about using multiple cameras is that you can um, easily drag them the way you want them to be so as I think that I would rather would have this angle before I get that one I also have to make sure that the keyframes that I have in the dolly are controlled within uh, the same um, the same um, time that I actually want my cameras to to play in and then I get something like that uh, so yeah um, pretty easy that you can uh, basically uh, play with your um, play with the cameras and remove them just, just like you want to. This is basically one of the main um, reasons why you should uh, do why you should always work with uh, different cameras, I guess, personally. Um, but as said, I'm just here to show you how to do it. Basically, the, the, the main thing, this is just the basics. I, may, I might do another tutorial going more in depth over several things. Um... Uh, this got requested, so um, let's do two more things. Now here, we here we come with two more tips. Okay, um, depth of field. Now this is definitely in motion designing one of the best things or one of the most eye-catching things. Playing around with your depth of field, controlling that, and being able to really get the hang out of that. Uh, what I do want to do is actually have uh, this uh, on this angle. I do want to play a little bit with it, play a little bit with the depth of field. Uh, so we get some some uh, different uh, points focused for the lens, and on this one, I do want to have it all blurred out. Or I actually would have to. Actually, I'd want to have this focused, and then 
gradually getting more blurred so that in the end it would give us um, the uh, the back uh, statues here focus. So within Element 3D at least, um, you there's a pretty handy function in the render settings for the depth of field. On the DOF mode, you can set it to focus indicator and there's nothing gonna change for now. But if you turn on for both cameras, basically, so I'm gonna highlight them, I'm gonna tap AA on my keyboard, I'm gonna go over the depth of field for both of these, I'm gonna activate that. And um, I'm just gonna shrink up the blur level to about 300 so this gets uh, really, so that you can actually notice. Uh, let's actually do that. Uh, let us, let's set it up to 500. I know we go in ham right now, but uh, you'll see why in a minute. Okay, great. Uh, so I got, oh, I bet, there we go. So um, what we got right here is this red um, focus thingy. This is basically what Element has given us with the focus indicator. Going on this camera, uh, AA, and I'm just gonna go on the focus distance. Playing with that, you'll see that this red gets more intense over the one object that is basically focused. Uh, if I just um, turn, let me actually uh, keyframe this and then click U so that I only have this value right here. Uh, if I actually go on the Element 3D uh, layer and put the DOF mode back to pixel blur, you'll see that this is completely blurred, this is completely blurred in the back, and we have this um, statue right here focused. So with that, um, I'm just going to keep it like that for now. Um, I'm going to, on the first keyframe, I am actually going to let my After Effects crash. Uh, what a great idea, I guess. Uh, let me actually disable that for a minute. I go on the, there we go. Put the blur level to about 200. That's definitely enough. Um, come on. Yeah, there we go. Uh, U for my focus distance, and I'm going to shrink that all the way down so that I more or less get this statue focused. Now, this is how I want it to be. Uh, let me actually go a little bit more in the space. There we go. There it is there now you can see we have this all all sharp all nice all focused but it's get blurred uh pretty fast um so that is basically how you would uh, combine using your uh depth of field from your after effects camera with your element 3d you can go uh yeah you can go ham and play with all these settings but be careful because depth of field is definitely due to the passes and um render um, samples that it has to take. One of the things that definitely might uh, take uh, the more, the most render time, uh, doesn't matter what uh, GPU, CPU you have, it is anyways, like it definitely in comparison to without depth of field, it does uh, take more time. Um, so yeah, this has been it. Actually, I don't want to get this too long. It's been about 20 minutes again. I hope you like this. I hope you get something out of that. Be sure to also watch my in-depth um, camera mo camera movement After Effects tutorial just to maybe get a little bit more information. I'm gonna give you some more tips in there just to go like really in depth. Uh, I hope you like this. Um, if so, please leave a like. Means a lot. Uh, support the series because I'll do more of these due to the fact that I now finally got my microphone set. And this has been me, um, yeah, I'm out, peace.